So if you're involved in the drone industry at all, and you follow the news coming out of the war in Ukraine, there's a good chance you've heard of Operation Spider's Web at this point. An attack that took place yesterday, which consisted of FPV drones launched by trucks that took out a very large section of the Russian Air Force. And I kind of wanted to cover this kind of breaking news story and kind of give my thoughts as a drone pilot myself and as someone who has served in the military and uh, kind of cover the whole situation and then talk about what this means for the future. So on June 1st, 2025, Ukraine launched a multi-front attack on five different air bases in Russia, all the way from the northwest tip to the southeast tip. What an attack like this would look like on the United States would essentially be attacking the west coast, the east coast, Texas, Hawaii, and Alaska all at the same time. An insane attack to pull off. The drones were concealed in and launched from trucks that were actually in the Russian territory. As you can see in this video right here, the drones were launched from inside the truck when a false ceiling was removed, and then they spread out, flew out over the air bases, and attacked the aircraft. As many as 117 FBV drones attacked the Russian air bases, destroying such aircraft as the Tu-160, Tu-95, and Tu-22M strategic bombers, as well as an A-50 airborne early warning and control aircraft. What this would look like for us is several of our B-2 bombers being taken out at the same time, as well as our AWACS aircraft, which provides essential radar services to our fighter jets. The SBU claims that more than 40 of these Russian military aircraft were hit, and following these attacks, Russian officials announced a state of emergency in several different air bases. According to President Zelensky of Ukraine, this accounted for 34% of Russia's strategic cruise missile carriers. Ukraine says that this attack took a year and a half in order to pull off, which is an insane amount of time to plan, formulate, get the logistics, get the secrecy, get everything built and ready for this in order to pull it off. And the fact they did pull it off is insane. It's one of the most crazy attacks I've seen in this whole war. All of the items used to carry out this attack, except for the high-grade explosives, are stuff you can easily get. One of the trucks did not make it to the target, uh, not sure whether it was intercepted or what, but apparently it self-destructed. All of the trucks self-destructed to help cover the tracks of all of the electronic stuff in them, as well as potentially cause more damage. This is something straight out of a spy novel. Sneaking all of this stuff in deep into enemy territory and pulling off an attack like this is something crazy. Let's discuss what this means for the future. Mine and many other people's thoughts went to one thing. When is this going to be used for terrorism? There is a very short film on YouTube that if you have not watched, I highly recommend you go and watch right now. It's called Slaughterbots. The link is in the description and it should be put up right there right now. Without spoiling anything, it basically goes over some very micro drones that are used for pinpoint accuracy against people. And when this was made, all of this technology was considered to be science fiction. I've been planning for a while to do a video breaking down Slaughterbots and seeing just how close we are to that becoming a reality. And after seeing all this, it looks like a scene exactly from the short film, where someone pulls up in a vehicle, lets loose a swarm of drones, and it causes absolute pandemonium. This attack could easily be scaled up either by bringing the drone size down and specifically targeting personnel or by scaling it up and targeting something else. I think unfortunately it's only a matter of time until we see something like this used against innocent civilians. This is a can of worms that has been opened right here. That's one of the things that kind of weirds me out on doing this whole channel about drones is trying to showcase all the uses that they can be used for to save lives and help make things more efficient, while also in the back of my head realizing that I'm covering and using the weapon that war is being fought with right now. It's kind of a strange feeling sometimes, but we can't turn our heads away, we can't bury our heads in the sand and ignore the fact that these exist. This is a serious problem that we're going to have to face going forward and realizing what these could be capable of. I've seen a lot of different scenarios of where an attack like this could be used. I don't even want to put those thoughts out into the world just in case someone sees it and hears it and gets an idea for me. I don't want to be that. It's 
it's something. It's it's quite scary though, especially with all the use of fiber optic drones right now, which from what I've read, Operation Spider's Web may have been attributed to the fact that the FPV drones were using fiber optic cables and the fiber optic looks like spider silk. I haven't seen confirmation that they were fiber optic FPV drones though. Regardless, this was an insane attack to pull off. It makes me very much more worried about the future, but we don't have any choice but to live in it. That's all I've got on this for right now. I am glued to my screen when I'm not working trying to get more information about all of this and uh, hopefully maybe do a larger deep dive into this when way, way more details are ironed out as they're released for InfoSec and OpSec and all that whatnot. And I am planning on doing a deep dive into the SlaughterBots video and seeing just how close we are. But uh, after that attack yesterday, I'd say we're there. So enjoy your existential dread. Happy Monday.